My name is Monica O'Brien and in this video I'm going to be talking about um, beliefs around the origins of the Great Pox, uh, today known as syphilis, uh, in Germany between 1495 and 1520. Um, so in the winter of 1494 to 1495, King Charles VIII of France laid siege to the city of Naples in Italy. When the siege concluded with victory for Charles um, early in 1495, soldiers and mercenaries from both sides began to, to move homewards. They headed back to France, to other Italian cities, to Spain, to Germany, Switzerland, and even here to Scotland. Um, as these soldiers and mercenaries moved homewards, contemporaries began to comment on um, the appearance of a frightening, a frightening sickness. Victims suffered with outbreaks of ulcerations and pustules all over their bodies. There, um, there was horrible um, pains and aches in the limbs, particularly at night. And in its most terrifying form, the disease would rot away the bones of its living victims. There was some debate and questioning at the time as to whether this was a new disease. Um, some believed that it might be completely new to Western Europe, um, but in the late 15th and early 16th century, many believe that the disease may have been in Europe previously, um, perhaps in the time of the great classical medical authorities upon whose work um, Western, uh, Western European medicine was really founded uh, in, in, in this period. Um, but regardless of kind of which side of this question you came down on, um, pretty much everyone agreed that this disease had not been seen in anyone's lifetime um, in 1495. No one remembered this disease. There was an awful lot of questions about it. Was it a curable disease? If so, what was or what were the most effective cures and therapies? What had caused this disease? How was the disease spreading? And the pandemic moved quite rapidly, very rapidly indeed for the time. Uh, it reached Germany by 1495, 1496. Um, it reached Scotland by 1498 and Russia by 1499. So it was a very rapidly moving disease. So as a way to, to understand uh, the great pox, this um, kind of unknown illness uh, or unfamiliar illness, um, medical authorities, physicians, surgeons, the every person on the street, um, and of course the religious community um, or communities all turned to religion. Um, and in this talk, when I, I kind of talk about religion, I'm fo focusing on um, Christian religion, so um, Catholicism and um, also Protestant faiths after, um, after the Reformation in Germany as well. Um, so Western European Catholics had been looking to religion as uh, a source of explanation for, for most, if not all facets really of life um, throughout the Middle Ages and they continued to do so for, for much of the early modern period as well. It was the core way for many people of understanding the world, of interpreting things, of understanding why things happened um, and also a way to kind of deal with how things happened, giving a sense of hope and control in certain situations. And we see this um, with previous illnesses and epidemics and pandemics that, um, that have broken out in Europe in the Middle Ages. Uh, for example, we see it in how people dealt with leprosy. We also see it um, very notably um, with uh, reactions and responses throughout Western Europe, not only in Germany, um, to, to the outbreaks of plague uh, that have been recurrent since the, since the 14th century. Um, so we see um, kind of interpretations of these diseases sometimes as punishment for sinfulness and um, there's often we see things like religious processions or extra kind of daily prayers and um, we see those both in Nuremberg in the late 15th century for example as ways to try and appease God and um, because they believed that the plague had um, in that case in Nuremberg they believed that the plague had been sent and um, perhaps as a punishment for sinfulness in the city. So religion was a very important prism through which life and medicine and disease were understood in uh, in this period. Um, so it was when the great pox appeared, it was one of the first kind of explanatory routes that everyone turned to, like I said, professionals, every, uh, every men or every, every persons uh, and um, of course, members of the clergy as well. And it was, um, it was very frequently kind of 
combined and fused with medicine it was kind of seen that um in um in the christian context uh, the christian god was seen as influencing everything that happened everything that happened and occurred ultimately came uh ultimately came from God. God was the ultimate cause who influenced kind of all of the earthly things. So he was, or God was very much um, behind everything in, um, in kind of Western European uh, Christian thinking around medicine and um, like I said, pretty much everything else in life too. Um, and we see this really very nicely um, in a very important uh, historical source from, from Germany. Um, and this is the Mandate gegen Gotteslästerung, which is uh, the blasphemy edict. This was issued by the Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I at the Imperial Diet in the German city of Worms on the 7th of August 1495, so in the very early stages of the European Great Pox pandemic. Um, and in this document, Maximilian stated that God had sent the Great Pox um, because of the proliferation of sin and it was going to come into the Holy Roman Empire, which of course includes um, much of the region uh, which is now defined as Germany. Um, it was going to come into the empire because people in the empire were sinning. Um, and in particular, um, the edict points to blasphemy. It says there's a lot of people blaspheming, swearing, committing other sins too, um, which are greatly displeasing God. They go against this, um, this Christian ideal of a good moral life. Um, and God wants to to punish us for our um, for our transgressions is what the um, what the edict stated. So in order to try and reform uh, the people of the empire uh, to try and appease God and therefore uh, hopefully um, in Maximilian and kind of Maximilian's and broader thinking at the time to stop the spread of this disease, um, the edict. From Maximilian brought in new punishments um, for anyone caught blaspheming or swearing or um, committing other sins as well. I think public drunkenness might have been on the list. Um, and these punishments included a fine. Um, it was quite a lot of money. Um, and also uh, you could be subjected for slightly more serious offences uh, to corporal punishment and nobles could also lose things like titles and offices as well if they were if they were caught. Um, so this was this was a very clear effort um, to to appease God who was seen as the ultimate cause of um, of the great pox. Um, but it did have as Darren Hayden has um, very nicely observed in his writings on uh, on the blasphemy edict and um, this also did have the additional benefit for maximilian of um all of these fines that were collected were going to be given to the emperor they're going to go to his to his coffers so not only was it theoretically good for god and if it succeeded in stopping the disease good for the empire but in the in the process it was also very beneficial uh, or potentially beneficial uh, to to the emperor as well <clears throat> 